Hi, I'm Marion Landry, the Technical Marketing Specialist for 3ds Max Design. In this small tip, I will show you how to paint a tree cluster directly on your terrain while using the Object Paint tool. Since the 3ds Max Design 2011 version, you now have access to the Civil Visualization extension. I will take advantage of the object library that is supplied with this extension to create my tree cluster. In this presentation, I'm using a Civil 3D project, but this tip can apply to any type of project. Let's have a look at this image first. You can see in this image the number of tree cluster there is. Can you imagine trying to place these trees one by one and having to move them on the exact location on the XYZ, making sure that they're not floating off my terrain if my terrain is uneven? That would take me hours. Let's see how easy and fast you can solve this problem by using the Object Paint tool. First, I need a selection of trees. Let's take advantage of the Civil Visualization extension and create few trees from the library. I love these trees because they are very light and work well for filling up the background of my scenes. Let's use this line here that I have created as a parent shape to start with. Then open the Object Placement Style Editor to create a selection of trees. In here, a wide selection of trees is available. Keep in mind that the Civil Visualization extension comes with different country kit library content that will affect the type of trees available. Now that I have the trees, I need to free them from the parent shape in order to use them for different purposes, not related to the Civil Visualization extension. Right now, if I try to move these trees as an example, I can't because it is constrained to a spline parent shape. Let's go to the Dynamite VXP Explorer under the DVSP Position Controller section, Tracking tab, and remove the link to the parent shape. By doing this, I am breaking the link from the parent shape, therefore freeing the tree from its constraint. So now I can move that tree how I want. I will do that for all the other trees I want to create my cluster with. You can understand that having a variety of trees will add randomness and realism to your tree cluster you're about to create. Now let's start building our painting action. First, we'll add a selection of trees to the object list we want to paint with. Make sure that you select the order of your painting action. In this case, I will go for all trees in random order. Then, decide what you want to paint on. For this example, I want to paint on my terrain. So let's paint on selected objects and select the terrain. Now I can start painting. Wherever my cursor will go, trees will be added to my terrain, just like magic. Obviously, I can adjust the brush strokes. For example, I can change the space between my trees, adjust the scatter scale, add some randomness to the tree scale by giving a range of scale to paint width, and so on. Once I'm happy with my painting, I just need to commit to lock the painting action. Notice that if I paint trees on the slant of my terrain, the trees are painted following the z-axis of my polygon, so I might have to adjust the rotation of my trees for this brush stroke. Very quickly here, I can populate my scene with trees. I can decide to paint tree clusters or add them one by one. Even if you paint trees one by one, it is still faster to use the object paint tool to do that because the trees are immediately placed on your terrain z-axis, which will solve the error of having floating trees. Obviously, the trees that I'm using right now are very low polygon, but you can also paint with very high detail tree or even tree proxies. The object paint tool is very useful, fast and versatile. I'm sure that you will find this tool very valuable for a range of tasks in your projects.